Echo Girl adalah give it up for Mr. President. Ya yes, so, Evelyn If you know, this is my president. Eh, I've been telling you guys that this one is very hard working. Eh, this is what I like to see results. Not just we are working on it. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Mr. President, you not do well. I'm not sure exactly what he did last week, but I'm telling you, last week was wonderful because I heard that soldiers had a major crackdown on Boko Haram last week, which makes me really happy. You get what I'm saying? They arrested so many members of Boko Haram. They seized so many weapons that even the soldiers were shocked by the amount of weapons that these people had in their camp. You know, I've just been thinking about those people living in the affected states that they must feel some kind of relief this week and you know for those that have lost children and loved ones I'm very sure that hearing this news maybe would ease the pain a little the one that shocked me the most is that more than 700 vehicles were found in this one Boko Haram camp just one camp more than 700 vehicles what to be honest with you guys I didn't know that what we're dealing with is that big now these people are not working how did they get money to buy 700 vehicles or were those vehicles stolen? I mean, how would we even know until our car identification process is improved in Nigeria, we may not be able to effectively track stolen cars. I hope we can work on that. Now, where are those people, enemies of progress, that were reporting bad things about Mr. President? Where are you, CNN, BBC, Reuters, all of you? You see your life now, eh? <laughs> now you can go and write good things about Nigeria and about Mr. President, eh? This is why me, I don't say bad things. You would never hear me say bad things ever on this show about Mr. President. I've been telling you guys that this man is a good man with good intention. Now you see, eh, Mr. President, eh, hopefully you keep doing whatever you did. Eh? If you keep doing it like this, we won't have to spend any money on trying to repair the image of Nigeria abroad. Eh? You get what I'm saying? Eh? This will be good news. Headline. All of you, CNN, go and write this as your headline. More than 700 Boko Haram vehicles confiscated by the police. I'm giving you good headlines right now. <laughs> by the way, Kali Dewo, have you seen any photos of these 700 vehicles that were seized by... Yeah, me, me too. I've not seen... Hey, sorry, my people. I'm not saying that anybody lied. God knows I can never see anything like that. But you know, since the soldiers released the press statement, they should at least let us see some pictures of these vehicles. Hey, you get what I'm saying? All I've been seeing is this one photo that has been circulating everywhere. There's only one vehicle in this photo. Eh? <laughs> see, it's not for me. I already believe the soldiers' report. That is not for me. No, 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 no. It's for the enemies of progress. People that are finding it hard to believe. Believe, eh? so that they can also believe like I do eh? <laughs> yes uh, so if anyone has seen the pictures please email me and this is my email address so that I can come back on this show and disgrace the unbelievers about this great story by the way <clears throat> while I was still celebrating this great victory <clears throat> do you guys know that Boko Haram strike again hey yeah! I could not believe it uh -uh! this time around you know they actually went into a military base in Maduguri not only to attack the soldiers but to free dozens of their members at a Giwa barracks. Hey, I couldn't believe it. I said, ah, ah. And this was not in the middle of the night. So they started shooting shortly after 7 p.m. So it wasn't as if the soldiers were sleeping. And eh? according to eyewitnesses, they threw explosives into the military compound, causing several buildings to catch fire. In fact, one soldier said that they forced their way inside the barracks and then they freed dozens of their members. I was like, no way, no way. The devil is a liar. Uh -uh. Isn't a military barrack supposed to be the safest place? Eh? I mean, it's the soldier's stronghold, is it not? And if they can carry out a successful operation inside the army barracks, God help the rest of the people that are outside the army barracks. But the story did not end there. I heard that civilian JTFs got hold of these Boko Haram members after they released themselves and they killed more than 300 of them. I apologize, this picture is very graphic, but this is a reality on ground right now in Maiduguri, Nigeria. I'm like, what? We're dealing with hundreds of Boko Haram members? Oh my God. So it's very clear that we still have some battles to fight. So in my humble way, <laughs> I have some advice for Mr. President. <laughs> you know, I do well, you know, I do well. First of all, I learned that the camp that was raided was near Chad. 
or Cameroon, something like that, that it wasn't really inside Nigeria. So can we start by securing our borders with Chad and Cameroon? And I mean, with some of the 1.1 trillion Naira budgeted for security, can we start by doing that? You know, the director of defense information, Major General Chris Olukolade said that many of those arrested had made useful confessions. My assumption now is that after the confessions, the next thing that we will do is to go after the sponsors. Yes, because you know, unless we know who the sponsors are, these people can be reinforced. And you know, this is another advice from your girl in New York. Can we start the rebuilding process in communities that have been devastated by Boko Haram? You know, many people are now homeless because they burned so many homes. At least we need to set up camps for those people. And many people have become disabled because they were attacked by Boko Haram. Some of them, their hands were cut off, their legs were cut off. We should set up some kind of funds to facilitate their well-being and rehabilitation, as well as provide business grants or scholarships for those interested in going to schools. Now, I believe that a lot of those people killed by Boko Haram would have survived if only they made it to good hospitals on time. Therefore, eh, Mr. President, you know, do well now that eh, we are communicating. Can we start working on upgrading the hospitals that we have in those affected states, you know, with modern medical appliances and medicines, including ambulances that will be ready to bring in victims anytime there is an attack. And not just that, we need a comprehensive healthcare system so that victims would not be denied treatment just because they don't have money. Yeah, we need to start working on that in Nigeria. They are doing it in so many other countries because human life is very important, you know? Now, while we're upgrading those hospitals, please, Mr. President, do not forget that we need to start building good hospitals of international standard all over Nigeria, you know, where everybody, including the Ogas at the top and their madams can be treated. And instead of them traveling abroad, we can save them, you know, traveling expenses. Yes. And lastly, I hope that by now that we've learned to station security officers in all schools, especially in the affected states, since we know that Boko Haram is going after schools. Now, let all the schools be guided by several officers who are ready to take down Boko Haram attackers anytime, any day. If anything, I know that a lot of devastated families will feel some kind of relief this week, and hopefully the trend will continue. And guess what, y'all? I am just keeping it real. Have you guys seen that video of the Nigerian man who was brutalized by South African policemen? Why does it say that this is the guy's score? Look, look what they're doing. Why are they dressing it? Record it, record it, Thirsty. They are dressing him now. This is fucked up. That's all they needed to do. Stop it. Enough. That is enough. Ah, uh -uh. what is the meaning of that now? Eh? Why? Why? South African police. What is your problem? Why? No, 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 no. I don't care what the guy did. This is pure discrimination. Because I know that some people would never be treated like that, no matter what they do. I still don't understand how Africans are discriminating against Africans in Africa. Uh -uh. Isn't that what you call stupidity? It's funny because this is the same country where one man killed his girlfriend with his gun in his house. And I'm yet to see him manhandled like that. So what is your problem with black people in South Africa? What is your problem? Eh? We know that you have a reputation. South African police have talked about you on this show several times, but they are not just doing it to their citizens. Now they are doing it to other citizens. Remember the Mozambican guy that I talked about the other time that they dragged on the road. I believe that guy later died. They kept banging his head on the truck. Remember? Now it's a Nigerian citizen. Seriously, I hope that the South African authorities see to it that those policemen do not go unpunished. Whatever his offense, this is not how you treat a fellow human being like yourself. Just because you're a policeman doesn't give you the right to harass another human being. Policemen are supposed to make you feel safe. Why is it that they are not the ones terrorizing us? Uh -uh. I hope that Jacob Zuma is listening to this show because I can assure you guys that this is not the end of the story. Now, to all my Nigerian people in South Africa, please be careful. As you can see from this video, many of these policemen are crazy. Yes, they are. Now, to be honest, I don't know what South Africa's problem is with Nigerians because this is not a first time that a Nigerian will be harassed in South Africa. Seriously, South Africans, y'all have forgotten the role that Nigeria played in the fight against apartheid, especially when the Western world was not paying attention. 
attention. They were busy listing Mandela as a terrorist when Nigeria was supplying materials for the ANC. Nigeria proclaimed itself as a frontline state, like other countries bordering South Africa at that time. We gave scholarships to South Africans to study and many of them studied in Nigeria. President Obasanjo at that time publicly offered black magic, Otumopo, you know, to finish the apartheid regime. And not only that, we were singing about Mandela. Ah, Mandela, Mandela. And then this is how you repay us, eh? Harassing Nigerian citizens in South Africa. Unfortunately, our leaders in Nigeria may not do anything about this video. I know that they retaliated during the yellow card drama when South Africa deported Nigerians, but social injustices like this this should not be overlooked either but what do i know i'm just keeping it real so i heard that nigeria is back to queuing for petrol i be here since eight o'clock okay. and i went to another uh, about five filling station i queued there i don't see where there since so three o'clock i'm three the first person the see my motor there this is my two cars there. That Wait. pilot and the other one. If you don't know anybody in here, you might not leave this place maybe the next two, three hours again. Since uh, about three days ago, I, I, I've been looking for the fuel to buy. Don't work. I have to eat and feed my people. Nigerians, why, why do we have to do this every year? At least once in a year, you will hear of petrol scarcity. Why? In a country that is one of the largest oil producers in the whole world, I, it just, you know, it doesn't make sense. What are we not doing right? When would we get past that? You know, it's funny because I don't remember ever hearing of fuel scarcity in the US. Never. And they have more than 300 million people in the US. I mean, how are they doing it? except once in New York after the Hurricane Sandy and within days it was over again why can't we be like other oil producing countries that are using their oil wealth for the good of their own people you know forget about the US forget about Canada what about United Arab Emirates eh? that is uh, Abu Dhabi Ajman Dubai and so on these people they keep developing their region with the oil wealth in their land I'm sure that many people have been through the Dubai airport and I'm telling you it is nice like really like really nice like mm -mm, that airport is nice you know <laughs> maybe because I'm trying to compare it with the airport in Lagos. Father have mercy on me for even doing that. It's like night and day. No, but really that airport, if you've been through Lagos airport and then you've been through Dubai airport, you know that these are like two opposite words, if you get what I'm saying. Yes, but you can imagine how surprised I was when I learned that they're now building a mega airport, which will be bigger and better. I'm like, what? There is nothing wrong with what you have. Eh? But no, 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 no. These are people that are constantly thinking of how to progress, you know, not just for now, but hey, in 10 years time, our population would have increased. We need something better. You know, they are constantly thinking ahead. And um, I heard that it was supposed to open in 2017, but now they postponed it to 2027 because of some money that they're waiting for. Meanwhile, I'm still admiring the airport that they have right now. And they're already thinking about doing something better. I'm only saying that just to challenge us in Nigeria. Many Nigerians today go to Dubai for vacation and Abu Dhabi. Meanwhile, we're still queuing for fuel in our own country. And uh, by the way, Madame Mugozi eh, in Aduel. <laughs> yes, of course, you know I would uh, come back to you. Madam, can you just explain to us exactly what is going on, why we're having fuel scarcity again? Eh? Because, of course, I know you should know all these things, you know. Or is this a punishment because we talked about the missing 20 billion dollars madam i heard that we didn't pay the marketers and you know that was the same thing that happened last year when we started having fuel scarcity and that was about the time that they kidnapped her mother mm. i hope they don't kidnap anybody this time around but i thought once they've removed oil subsidy that all this will be history there'll be no more fuel scarcity you know i didn't know that we were going from fry pan to fire ah! Now we are paying more money for fuel since they remove oil subsidy. And on top of that, we still don't have it. Ah, what is happening now? Madam, can you explain to us? Eh? What kind of country is this? And what happened to the money allotted to subsidy now since they remove subsidy? I think about 800 billion naira or something like that. Naija. Madam Ngozi, seriously, nobody is accusing you of anything. We are just hoping for some kind of explanation. It's our light now since we are Nigerian citizens in our country. We should at least know what is going on. We should know how much is coming 
coming in, how they are spending the money, if they remove subsidy, what are they doing with the money? You know, I think one of the reasons we're having fuel scarcity is because we don't refine our own oil. Eh? What a shame. How many times do I have to talk about this? Hey, before the Nigerian government will do something, y'all should build us our own refineries. Enough of exporting our oil to other countries to refine it, and then we will ship back our own oil. Ah, can you imagine? That, may, that thing pisses me off. Eh? This is my natural resource, and I have to ship it out for them to refine it, and then I will buy it back with gold. Who does that? Uh -uh. That is why we keep facing fuel scarcity. And then they have to pay marketers in the process. You see what I'm saying, eh? Something that could be eradicated. We are still doing that after they remove subsidy. I'm so upset, I don't want to see anything anymore. Until we can work on our own refinery. Seriously, we will keep facing this problem. I've noticed though that developing countries are constantly trying to get better. I'm not saying that Nigeria is not a developing country, but you know, if you have a 20 year old son, and he's just starting to talk like a two-year-old you are not exactly excited because he was supposed to have done that a long time ago so i'm very happy for all our developments it's just that that's not where we should be now while others are thinking about expansion you know we, we are not even maintaining what we have right now many a times we wait for something to get spoiled or for it to get old and start tearing apart that's when we start to fix it maintenance is not even in our dictionary at all hello and um speaking of airports by the way did you guys hear about the airport drama in swaziland <laughs> Apparently, the king has opened the international airport, but um, the only problem is that no international airline is interested <laughs> in flying into the airport. <laughs> in fact, a lot of people are calling it an elephant project. And you know, I don't blame them because if I tell you that it has taken me 11 years to construct this thing, <laughs> and I'm telling you that I'm spending $280 million, on this thing, would you think that something ain't right? <laughs> would you call it an elephant project? Eh? Mm -mm -mm. I heard that the airport has several structural defects and several violations. And not only that, it has yet to be granted an operating license by the International Air Transport Association. And no airlines are expected to make use of the airport for years to come. So why are we inaugurating the airport if it's not ready for use? <laughs> that doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, are we having another inauguration when it's completed or what? By the way, the name of the airport was Sikupe International Airport. But as of last Friday during the inauguration, the king renamed it King Mutswazi III International Airport. I say let the show begin, you know? It even included a royal terminal for the king and his 15 wives. I found out that this new airport doesn't have its own airline. <laughs> king of Swaziland. Don't you know when you build an airport, even if it's just three aircraft, you're supposed to have your own airline. Eh? Other people won't just be coming to patronize you if you don't have something going on for yourself. And so all these international airlines, they are all avoiding Swaziland. I said, eh, eh. And the man has the guts to go and rename the airport after himself. I'm like, that is not what you, you should be doing right now. What you should be doing right now is providing aircraft for the airport. The only aircraft at the airport right now is the king private jet <laughs> and a lot of people are saying that it may be the only aircraft that will be patronizing that airport right now they've spent about 275 million dollars and this is where the airport stands right now i tell you one that shall never end i was actually so happy for my swaziland people because they've been going to south africa before they could fly to anywhere i was like oh finally they don't have to go to another country but it looks like the king doesn't really know what he's doing right now i learned that he doesn't really have a business plan he's just doing it to make a statement but it's not being done right but you know while we're talking about airlines and airports i can't end this story without thinking about those 239 passengers and crew members on the Malaysia Airlines flight 370 that went missing. I mean, it's so sad. No one knows if the plane crashed or landed somewhere. No one knows if those people are still alive. And I can't even imagine their family members are going through right now. So please keep them in your prayers and, you know, keep these family members in your prayers. And guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So I heard about these twin sisters in Australia, I, identical twins, so you guys know I love identical twins, oh, oh my god. Yes, they call them Lucy and Anna, both of them are now 28, very beautiful ladies. They took this picture when they were 17. I ain't they beautiful 
and they look alike, you know? <laughs> but no, 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 no. They don't think they are beautiful enough. Can you imagine for somebody to look like this and think that she doesn't look beautiful? And yeah, ah, people have problems, eh? So guess what? They decided that they have to enhance themselves. They said they wanted Kim Kardashian's breast. Mm? I'm like, ah, no be me good, don't come on. <laughs> Why would anyone want Kim Kardashian's breast? Whatever Kim Kardashian has on her body, that is her own body. Eh? Why do you have to have somebody else's body on your body? That is that ah, that makes me sick. So they started all kinds of plastic surgeries to look more beautiful, to look like Kim Kardashian, and then to look more identical. I said they already look identical. What is their problem? This picture was taken when they were 19. My people, to me, don't they already look alike? Eh, don't they look beautiful and identical in this picture? Eh, but uh, guess what? Now that they are 28, they've spent more than $200,000 on plastic surgeries. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Yoruba people will say, and it's a nifila, and it's the person that has head doesn't have the hat to put on the head. The person that has hat to put on a head doesn't have a head. Does that make sense to you? Eh? Now this is how they look. <coughs> yes. Uh, to be honest, I personally like them better when they were real. I mean when the thing was actually their own thing and not like fake. Now they have breast implants, lip fillers. I mean take a look at their lips now compared to their lips before you see what i'm saying don't you like the before than the after and then they tattoo their eyebrows i said ah seriously why would i yeah just to name a few of what they did though now nothing is real anymore hey fake lips fake boobs fake this fake that color the world this is why i want you those girls that you are roaming around with you better be sure always check and double check that uh, everything is real this age that we are in, it's not always what you see that you get to. I've been telling you, mm, waiting to be my own, just always check. Why are you asking me if you should ask her if her thing is real? You want her to slap you? You don't, oh, no, 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 that is not how you do it. Ah, uh -uh. can't you tell if something is not real? You don't have to ask her if it is real. If not, she will give you a dirty slap. By the way, um, can a woman breastfeed a child with fake breasts? You know, I'm just curious, my people, because I wonder if these women that do things like this, if they are ever thinking about having a family, I mean, waiting to be my own. Although I found out that it depends on which kind of surgery you get. Some of them you can still breastfeed, others you cannot. <laughs> I said, why will you even trouble yourself in the first place? Eh? And not only that, so these girls are weird. No, seriously, they are creeping me out. Do you know that they share the same Facebook account? So just one Facebook account for both of them. I'm like, seriously, why do you need to do that? And then they share one cell phone. I said, no, 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 no. The devil is a liar. Even when you are married to somebody and the two of you become one, eh? It's not like you have to share the same cell phone, share the same Facebook account. Seriously, that's just creepy. And then on top of that, they sleep on the same bed. I said, whoa. Uh -uh. My first question was, are they gay? Why do you have to be sleeping on the same bed at the age of 28? with your sister when it's not like you don't have money to have big bed so you can stretch you know how you can stretch your body on the bed and just enjoy a good night's nice sleep no 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 you have to be hitting somebody on the bed because of what because you are twins uh -uh. there are other things out there now what is your problem eh but you know the creepiest part of this story is that they are both dating the same guy <laughs> they are waiting for marriage <laughs> i said hi this world is ending you know i told Kole the world that they're dating the same guy he said and what is wrong with that now that the man is a very lucky man i said ah shame on you <laughs> i don't know why men like something like that too one man on two women you are doing <laughs> hey god forgive you but you guys know that there's nothing that concerns me. Whatever you want to do with your body, that is your own palava. But my problem with these ladies is that they spent $200,000. 200, ah, yeah, you know? Just think about what that money could do in the life of so many people. Ah, uh, did I mention that they don't wear the same outfit twice whenever they go out? So if they go out five nights in the week, that is five different outfits that they would never come back to. No, they said they don't do that. And everything has to be new. Everything as in the shoes, the what I said, yuck, but yuck, but yuck. Too hot.
hot chocolates. Double or nothing. That's the rule identical twins Anna and Lucy live by. Whatever she eats, I, I eat. eat. The same, exactly the same. We like the same food, the same drinks. Everything has to be the same. Like we share everything, even a boyfriend right. we share. He knows the closeness, our bond. Um, he understands us. He just gets us. But what about when you fight? Is it ever two against one? It's always, always two against one. one. It's always, always two, two against, against one. one. The twins buy two of everything. In their bedroom, it's like seeing double. How many of these matching outfits do you think you've got? Probably about 100. When they go out, the show-stopping sisters attract plenty of attention. The Kardashians are here. Yeah. yeah. Perth sign Kardashians, yes. huh? Yes. I kept wondering where they get the money, though, because the story says that they take care of elderly people, that that's their job. So I'm like, so where did you find $200,000? Anyway, now they are celebrities. They definitely have a lot of money. In fact, they now go for weekly infrared sonas and microdermabrasion treatments and as well as skin peels in order to maintain their youthful looks. Eh? Anyway, I wish them good luck. But guess what? You know, I don't know anything I beg. I'm just keeping it real low. Now moving on to Ghana, did you guys hear about that pastor who lives in a faraway bush with members of his church in order to avoid the so-called sinful world? Eh? <laughs> One that shall never end. My people, Pastor Daniel Nivile of the Spoken Word Church, I think that's the name of the church, this man successfully convinced about 37 members of his church to go and pitch their tents in a bush in Oyibi. And that is like several kilometers from Accra. Their women are not allowed to wear trousers or use jewelry. Yes, they can't use anything like this. They wear long dresses and they have new names. These are educated people, by the way, and many of them are graduates of tertiary institutions. In fact, there's a female former lecturer among these people. They said everybody else, that is you and I, that uh, we are living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Because there's too much sin out there in the atmosphere, you know? The whole atmosphere is corrupt, yes. But, you know, living in this bush, not just any bush, but this particular bush, which they call holy bush, living there is the only thing dignifying and free from sin. And that makes them closer to God. Do you know that many of them left their jobs as in they resigned? They said they are going to live in the holy bush. And then they left their houses, they left their properties. Now they live in tents as they wait for the coming of the Lord. In the meantime, every one of them have turned into farmers and they are doing mushroom farming. They are also producing snail and pigs and so on and so forth. The only thing that I don't understand in this story is that they are selling the farm produce to regular people like you and I. I said, why? Why are they doing business with Sodom and Gomorrah? I'm surprised that they are still doing business with sinners like the rest of us. <laughs> Some of them are married. So, you know, I've been wondering for a long time, are they allowed to do it in the holy bush? <laughs> is it a sin for husbands and wives to do it in the holy bush? Does that mean they will corrupt the atmosphere? Wait to be my own. <laughs> Wait to be my own. You know, one woman said she loves being there so much that she would never ever go back to the world. I mean, to Sodom and Gomorrah, that is where you and I live right now. <laughs> she said she will live there for the rest of her life. Another one said there is too much homosexuality out there in town. <laughs> is this true, my Canadian people? Eh? It's kind of filled with uh, homosexuality. <laughs> to the point where this You know, the reporter that covered the story asked her if there is no sin at all in their newfound home. And the woman said, mm, we try to minimize it. I said, it's either there is sin or there is no sin. What do you minimize? How can you minimize sin? You know, somebody like me would not be allowed to enter their tents or their camp because, you know, it is a sin for women to wear anything that doesn't get to their knuckles and, you know, everything must be covered. I better, I better pull this thing down. Help me, somebody. So it's not about going to a secluded area. It's about being the light wherever you are. But you guys know I don't know anything. I'll keep you posted if they eventually decide to pack their stuff and go back home.
Oh, you there me? But you know, it's not all weird news from Ghana. Before I go today, I'd like to give a shout out to the youngest player ever, all time, to play in any favorite tournament. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm talking about the 13 year old. Actually, she's yet to celebrate her 13th birthday. So, the almost 13 year old, Fusena Momini. Yes, give it up for my sister. She was recently drafted into the Black Princesses of Ghana. Fever under 17 World Cup that would play in Costa Rica. Mama, I am so proud of you, girl. I mean, really, we are so proud of her. I know that she will do well. All you have to do is look at her face. You can tell that she can play, eh? <laughs> Where were those drafting people when I was under 17? I'm telling you guys, I was really good then. Ah, some of you are not ready. If you should see me on the field, ah, some of you cannot handle this. Ah, I remember then I'll be like, ah, 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 pass the ball. Pass the ball, pass. Oops. I'm okay, oh. I'm okay. Anyway, go girl. We are so proud of you. And guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Now, before I leave today, first of all, I want to thank everybody that reached out to the woman that has cancer in Nigeria. Thank you so much for reaching out to her. Everyone that donated, even if it was $10 or 20 Naira. I just want you guys to know that I really appreciate you guys reaching out and I'm sure that somehow it will come back to you, whatever good you've done for this family. And before I leave, I also wanted to call your attention to a lady that I recently met. Her name is Khadija Yusuf, and she's studying here in the US. Um, it's a very sad story because right now Khadija has been kicked out of school. She's been going to Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh where she was studying cognitive science in order to be a neuroscientist. This girl is so so brilliant she had scholarship all her life and when she got into Carnegie University they gave her lots of scholarship as well and she took out some loans and she still couldn't pay the whole tuition and guess what the school eventually had to kick her out now her mom would have helped her but unfortunately the mom was laid off at her job and not only that the mom actually had stroke as well as heart attack. Since the beginning of this year that she was kicked out of school, Khadijat has been doing two jobs, trying to pay her tuition as well as take care of her mom. She doesn't have anybody else that could take care of the mom. And she just turned 19. And you know, it's very devastating when I heard about her story. Uh, the two jobs were not <laughs> making enough money for her to pay her tuition. So she's still not back in school yet. And they were not enough for her to take care of her mom. And because of that, she started a campaign online trying to raise money. So many well-wishers have donated for Khadijat. And she was able to raise up to $3,000. Now, with that $3,000, she is able to pay what she was owing the school when she was kicked out. But unfortunately, it doesn't take care of her mom. And it doesn't take care of the next school year. So I spoke with Khadijat and she told me that she can't go back to school until next year, January. So now she's losing a whole year unless she's able to raise enough money on time in order to go back so please and please I know that everybody have their own stories I was an international student here in the US so I know how hard it can be sometimes but please in case you're touched by Khadija's story or in case you just want to know more about her to see how she's doing please send her an email her email is up there khadijat.yusuf at gmail.com and whatever you do once again I'm very sure it will come back to you someday and guess what I'm just keeping it real all right y'all it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here until next week I'm gonna see y'all later peace out